from the NZ Drummer Podcast and andrewrooneydrums.com, it's the student's guide to drum lessons. Here are your hosts, Chris Dawson and me, Andrew Rooney. And here we are. Oh, hello. <laughs> Studio B. Studio B uh, down in Waiuku. Yeah, man. That's amazing. There's a great little setup you got here. Not that little, actually. No, it's... A- the last episode we said, you know, this was closing thoughts. Yeah. And we were trying to wrap everything up. And then, you know, we talked and we thought, nah, there's... There's more to say. There's more to talk about. Yeah. But unfortunately, for all you listeners, we're back. <laughs> Got to give you some more. <laughs> Whether you want it or not. <laughs> but man, honestly, a couple of things since I talked to you last. I was so happy coming back from the break. Probably going to make people vomit <laughs> in their mouths a little bit. But um, I was so happy to be back teaching. That's weird. Yeah. Why would you say that? I mean, <laughs> and then I thought, you know, like... That's quite cheesy, but I don't know how many jobs people would be like bouncing back into work and like, yeah, let's do this. I'm ready. Yeah, I, I really think that teaching, what well, teaching drums at least, is one of those cool jobs. You don't. It is. Yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. really have like a, a, a major boss or something like that to to tell you exactly what to do. Your times, you know, you this is your own business, isn't it? So you you can turn up whenever you want to, sort of thing. As mm. far as like, okay, I'm going to. I do normally teaching. turn up, by the way. Yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> normally. You know, yeah, so your, your, your teaching schedule will be from, you know, whatever time you decide to start and whatever time you decide to finish, um, which is great. It's great. And the other thing I find a lot about teaching, uh, at least privately, is that most of the people want to get taught after school hours or yeah. after work hours. So that means that you've got the whole day to go yeah. and play drums, basically, and yeah. whatever it is you want to do. Go to the gym and, you know, gym. drop the kids off at school exactly. and, you know, you can that's be right. that guy. It's yeah. awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Every day I seem to have an experience where I relate everything back to drums or teaching. Oh, yeah. You're probably the same. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. And I was really thinking about our gear episode. Mm. And one of the first lessons I had back was with an adult student. Right. And he had forked out a lot of money for a drum kit. His setup would be worth at least seven times more than mine. Wow. Yeah, really, really high-end, expensive gear. He came back to his first lesson and he said, look, um, I, I'm just so unhappy with the sound of my kit. Gosh. And he said, you know, I really want it to sound like the kit here. Mm. And my kit is a Yamaha Stage, Stage Custom, custom yeah, which right. is $1,200 brand new Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from <laughs> Music Works and uh, an Acrylite Snare, which I picked up for 150 bucks secondhand on Trade Me. Right. Not trying to make myself look clever and not trying to make him look like an idiot. But, um, man, I was just like, wow, gear is really yeah. curious and mm. a lot of misconceptions around gear. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm, it's, I think I mentioned earlier, I was, I was thinking about that, that concept of if you were a great player, you'd have great gear, and if mm. you weren't a very good player, then you'd have not so good gear. I yeah. didn't have that actual thought when I was younger. Yeah. And, um, I've heard lots of people on what I would consider to be quite <coughs> dodgy gear, and it still sounds amazing. You go, that sounds mm. amazing. And then people on the really, really expensive stuff, it's like, well, that doesn't sound that good comparatively. You know, no. you know it's like, well, you know, I've got a $4,000 drum kit or whatever, and then somebody else has got a $10,000 drum kit. And what's the difference? There? I see expensive gear as a bit of a treat. Absolutely. Um, not yeah. necessarily going to really make you sound better at all. Mm. You like it. Um, the finish is possibly going to be really nice, and it's very customized and beautiful. You're probably going to be more drawn to the kit. You yep. might spend a bit more time on it because you just enjoy it. Yeah. Like a nice car. That's right. Exactly. A nice car is still just going to get you from A to B. That's right. Like a <laughs> Toyota Corolla will. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But, um, yeah, anyway, I thought okay. that was interesting, and um, I certainly don't want to be out here embarrassing my students no, with stuff like that. But it was just it was like, man, that really illustrates the point. That's right, yeah. I still like the idea of getting the, the budget sort of stuff. Like, well, not budget stuff, but, but lower end sort of things and learn your trade, you know. And um, learn to tune drums, learn to, you know, what different heads sound like, all that sort of information that's really, really important so that if you do end up buying like a very expensive something or other, then you'll know whether it is actually a really good snare drum or whether it's Mm. a bad snare drum because you know how to tune and you know. And certainly the longer I play, and um, I've noticed this with our friends, the less people care. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I know one drummer that used to be up at Drum City, um, he had a really beautiful DW kit, but... He was on tour quite often, and the drum was so beat up. It was so <laughs> beat up, but it sounded amazing. It just and it was 
often um, asked for or requested on recordings from other bands and stuff. Can you bring that DW drum along? From the way he sounds on it, though? I don't know. No, I, I, I'm un- unsure about that. I think... I think it was used just in the studio because it sounded good in the studio for, for for whoever was playing it, you know. And but it was so beat up, not a good looking drum by any means, but it was still it did the sounded job. amazing, you know. Anyway, that's <clears> yeah, I'll... that's I like it. I, I, I would definitely say that our job is probably one of the best jobs ever. I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is so good. It actually is my dream job. Yeah, I've never got up in the morning and thought. That I didn't want to do this job. No, and I have done that with other jobs. I've actually, oh, I've, yeah. I've, I've been, you know, doing quite a lot of other jobs throughout before I fully went into drums. Yeah, and it was quite a few mornings that I'd wake up and I'd go, I really, yeah. really, really don't want to go. Yeah, how many sick days have I got left? That's well, right. Let's use yeah. two of them this week. Mm. And things like I find with things like um, holidays, for instance, like my wife, she likes to go on holidays. And we always have to sort of compromise because I don't want to have holidays. Because, I'm the same. <laughs> because it's like, but if I go away on holidays, then I don't get to play my drums. Yeah. So, I mean, if I can't get on the drums at least once every second day, yeah, it, I'll, I'll die. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just one of those things that happens with like people that are really into whatever it is they're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so holidays are, are, are kind of taxing. It's like, yeah. wow, can I actually afford to be away from my instrument for that long? Sorry, babe. If you're with me, holidays are off the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So I usually take practice pad sticks. <laughs> oh, and, um, no. And, um, I'm with, no. Uh, or I used to take a pad and sticks. So my sticks have been you know, quite to quite a few places around the world. So <laughs> they've gone to India and they've been oh, to no. Canada. And Come on, kids. Before we hit the markets today, we're going yes. to do our hours of... <laughs> that's right, exactly. <laughs> and then I'd have my um, whatever book I was working on at the time, probably um, Wilcoxon's 150 solos, that sort of oh thing, trying to go God. through those. Just to, you know, do like you know a couple of solos in the morning and a couple of solos before I went to bed, you know, in the apartments that we're at. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Well. Okay, I thought I was bad, but maybe I'm <laughs> not as bad as I thought. Oh, actually, man, the other thing I thought would be good, especially if people are coming to this late, yep. or maybe they just – are starting here because they think, oh, I'm a bit more interested in this topic. Can you sort of give us a quick rundown on your, I guess, background and qualifications? Because yeah, we absolutely. tried to do that, yeah, but then we really... talked about it and we hadn't really done it. That's right. We were sort of foolish, weren't we? Yeah. Foolish. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's very un-Kiwi yeah, yeah, to talk right. yourself up and say, yeah. hey, I got this, I got that, I got that. But, that's right. I mean, otherwise, why would anyone want to listen to us? Mm, exactly. <laughs> so I have, I guess I've, I've been playing for... 27 years, I think. I've So yeah, lots of gigs that I've done. Uh, then I ended up going to university. I did a Bachelor of Performing Arts. And then I did Honours. And then I did a Master's. So yeah, I've got my Master's in Jazz Performance. Yeah, it's basically all my qualifications. And one important thing, especially with you being in Waiuku now, mm. people might not be aware of how many great drummers yeah. in the scene at the moment that you okay. taught. Oh. <laughs> um, yes. And people might be surprised. Yeah, Do you want to give us a bit of a roll call on some of the uh, drummers that... I, I feel bad about that. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm asking... It, it's me prompting it. So. Okay. So w- I think that when I look at the guys that have become really, really good that I've taught, I always feel that they've actually, they were going to be good. You know, yep. I've definitely had, you know, at some point I had a hand in you know, the education, which hopefully I did well enough to get them to where they are. <laughs> so... Um, let me see. Um, I've taught a bunch of people. <laughs> I've I'll, I'll get you okay, rolling, okay, man. Okay, Adam right. Toby. Ad, okay, yes, I, I taught Adam for a while. Um, <laughs> Tom Leggett. Taught me a couple. You taught couple you a couple, yeah. I, didn't, I wasn't listening. But. Yeah, yeah, well, you were just a yeah, you bad student, <laughs> bad student. Who else is a, a guy called Albert Lee, who's like a really amazing young drummer. Um See, this is the thing when yeah. we start actually talk, saying names. Yes, this is the problem. Yeah, yeah. And then, like five minutes after we stop recording, we go, <laughs> yeah. well, what, are we, "What are we doing?" Yeah, yeah. There's a few: Tristan Deck, Frank Gibson Jr. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, there is, there's quite a few, and I can't think of all of them. <laughs> a few of the boys have brought that up. Yeah, not everybody knows everybody. That's and right. And if someone doesn't know who you are, yeah, they might not be aware of the role that you've had. On the yeah, career of other people, I, and I got that from uh, Rex McLeod. Just mm-hmm. the way of of uh, trying to get 
your information across and then, you know, finding the thing that the student wants to do and then, and then, and giving them the right information. Um, so I, yeah, I think I did quite well with a bunch of guys, at least there's quite a few of the uni guys I've, I've taught, you know, um, yep. been really good for me. You know, it's like, it's you sort of, um, a positive affirmation, I guess, you know, you yep. can see that, well, I'm actually doing something right. You know, you're actually helping people out. Cool. That's cool. Great. What about you? Yeah. Just quickly on me again, I, did the same uni course that you did. That's right. I did the degree. That's all I've done since that time, which is around 2006, I think I started there. Living the dream, as they Living say. the dream. Absolutely yeah, awesome. That's right. Right. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I've got my own teaching space now with in Scotty Pearson's building. Mm. Nah, couldn't be happier. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Oh, yeah.